Hello everyone, welcome to today's video on compound theoretical probability. So compound theoretical probability is not as hard as it sounds, um, just a lot of words going on, but we already talked about theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is what people think of when you just hear the word probability. It's likelihood, how likely something is to happen, or what we expect to happen. Um, and then we had experimental probability or relative frequency, which is like what actually does happen. But we're going to be talking about in the likelihood what we expect to happen today. And theoretical probability is defined by this ratio of the number of favorable outcomes or successes for a particular event divided by the total number of possible outcomes. And as I note here, um, we're going to look at the sample space to find this information. So for example, if we have a coin, here's my $1 um, coin piece, which is pretty cool. This is heads, this is tails. There are two possible outcomes where I flip this toy, coin, could either get heads or tails. So to find the probability of flipping a heads, for example, that's going to be one out of my two outcomes. So the probability would be one half. So that's simple theoretical probability, which doesn't mean it's easy. Simple here just means that there's only one event happening. What we're doing today is called compound probability, and that means there's two or more events. So for example, like we have an example one, instead of flipping this coin once, and that being it, I'm gonna flip the coin once, check whether I get heads or tails, and then I'm gonna flip the coin a second time, and check whether I get heads or tails. We find the compound theoretical probability the same way as simple theoretical probability, using this ratio, the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So for example one, a coin is flipped two times, and then they're going to ask us to find three different probabilities. The probabilities of getting two heads, two tails, or one head, and one tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our sample space, represent our sample space, so that we have listed out all the possible outcomes of flipping a coin twice. And I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to start by creating something that's called a tree diagram. You can decide it's supposed to look like a tree can decide whether you think the name makes sense. Um, it's based on the idea that we have like an initial trunk and then we have branches coming out from that trunk. So our trunk is going to be our first event. So what are the outcomes of flipping a coin? Heads and tails, getting heads and tails. So there are two possible outcomes for my first event of flipping a coin and I can rep represent those with an H for heads and a T for tails. So those are going to act as my trunks of the tree. And then I flip a second coin. So now after I flip this, once I'm going to flip it again. Again, what are the possible outcomes for flipping a coin? Yeah, I could get heads or tails. So that means I'm going to have branches that come out of each of my trunks that represent heads or tails. So what this means then, right, is that the first time I could get heads or tails, and then the second time I could also get heads or tails. So if I want to now list out my options, I could get heads and then heads. So that's going to be HH, and we see that here. I could get heads the first time and tails the second time, HT, we see this here. I could get tails the first time and heads the second time. That's what this is representing. And then I could get tails the first time and tails the second time, which is what we see happening here. So there are four possible outcomes when I flip a coin two times. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and te tails, tails. Okay, so once we have that list, that sample space, finding the probability isn't too challenging. Let's find the probability then if we're flipping a coin two times, the probability of getting two heads. Well, we need to find the total number of favorable outcomes, meaning getting two heads here, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, so how many possible outcomes are there? One, two, three, four. So our denominator is gonna be four. Okay, and then for the number of favorable outcomes or successes, I'm looking for the number of those four that has two heads. Heads, heads, that's one. Heads, tails, nope. Tails, heads, nope. Tails, tails, nope. So we just have one favorable outcome where we have two heads. 
So that means that the probability of getting two heads when we flip a coin twice is one fourth, or what is that as a percent? Yeah, 25%. Also 0 0.25 as a decimal. Now let's try that with tails. I want to get the probability of getting two tails. So again, what is my total number of possible outcomes when I flip a coin two times? What's going to be on the denominator? Four, right? That doesn't change. And I'll actually go ahead and add that for both of these. Because in each of these situations, there's only those still same four possible outcomes in our sample space. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. Okay, so of my um, outcomes in my sample space, how many of those are a favorable success here, meaning we have two tails? Yeah, just one. Tails, tails is one of our four options. So again, we have a probability of one fourth, which is equal to 25%. So we would say there's a 25% chance of getting two tails when I do this twice. And then lastly, I have the probability of getting one heads and one tails. Okay, so for that, they're not saying, they're saying the order doesn't matter here. So it doesn't mean I have to get heads first and tails second. That would be different, but just of getting overall one heads and one tails when I flip a coin twice. Now looking at my list, I have heads, tails here, and then tails, heads. Yeah, I could also see this in my tree diagram. This represents heads, tails, and this one represents tails, heads. So those are my two options. So two favorable outcomes. So two fourths is equal to one half because four divided by two is two and two divided by two is one. So there's that common um, factor of two and four that I can divide out and I get one half. And then what is one half as a percent? Yeah, 50%. Okay, so those are my three probabilities. And notice 25% um, plus 25% plus 50% sum up to 100% because I've now covered all four of these possible outcomes. So no matter what, when I flip this coin twice, I'm either going to get two heads, two tails, or one heads and one tails. Okay, just for fun, even though we are doing theoretical probability, let's see what happens. Okay, I got heads for my first one. And I got tails for my second one. Okay, so I got this option, one heads and one tails, which is the most likely. I had a 50% chance of getting one heads and one tails. So that makes sense. But, you know, I could have gotten one of the other options as well. Okay, so what's important that you understand here is this is just like simple theoretical probability where we divided the total number of favorable outcomes or successes to the total number of possible outcomes. Um, the only kind of different additional step is since we have two events, finding the sample space takes a little bit more work. And we'll of course see one more example like that, and then I'm gonna have you try one that's related. So now we have example two. So in example two, we're told that you flip a coin once, and then you spin a spinner that has options one, two, three, and four, which are all equally likely to get. So they're like the same size. What is the probability of flipping a heads and spinning a one or two. Okay, so now we have a compound probability question because we're talking about flipping the coin as our first event and then spinning the spinner as our second event. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sample space because then we'll know all of our possible outcomes and we'll be able to pull out our favorable outcomes. So I'm gonna create a t tree diagram. Even though creating a tree diagram I think is a little tedious. Um, if you don't know what that word means, it's a good word. It means like, basically annoying, um, but like it takes a lot of steps. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work and it's a little irritating, but it is very good at making sure you don't miss anything or make any mistakes. So it's going to be worth it here. So for our first event, we're flipping a coin. What are our possible outcomes for flipping a coin? Yep, you can get heads or tails. So those are going to be like my brand, my trunks. And then I'm going to spin a spinner, which has four options. I could spin a one, two, three, or four. So that means one, two, three, and four are gonna be my branches to my trunks. So now I have a tree diagram which represents my sample space. So let's just take a second to talk about it. This H1 
That means I get a heads when I flip the coin, and then when I spin my spinner, I get a one. So that's one possibility. Here, this three, this is connected to my trunk of a tails. So that means I got a tails when I flip the coin, and then when I spun the spinner, I got a three. What is my total number of outcomes? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight possible outcomes. As a note, you can find the number of possible outcomes by multiplying the number of possible outcomes for each of the independent events. So for flipping a coin, heads and tails, there's two outcomes. And then for the spinner, there's one, two, three, and four, there's four outcomes. Two times four is eight, and there's gonna be eight outcomes. You don't need to memorize that fact necessarily, but it's gonna be a helpful check. Okay, so now let's actually find this probability. So we wanna find the probability of flipping a heads and then spinning a one or a two. So if we're told the probability of getting one or two, then that means we could it's a success if we get a one and it's a success if we get a two. So we can include both of those. So as before, the denominator is gonna be the total number of outcomes. So the denominator is gonna be eight. And then my numerator is gonna be the number of favorable outcomes. So a favorable outcome means I have heads and then a one or two. All right, so let's look at my sample space. It's only gonna be a success if I have heads. So that means right off the bat, all of these tails options, we're gonna cross them off. Those, those don't work. And then, okay, I'm looking for heads and then I need a one or a two. So a heads and one is gonna be a success. And then heads and two would also be a success. Heads and three, that's not gonna work out because I need a one or a two, same with four. So looking at this then, what's the number of favorable outcomes I have? There's two options, heads one and heads two. So that means I can make my numerator of two. So two eighths is equivalent to one fourth. Eight divided by two is four and two divided by two is one. So two eighths is equal to one fourth and one fourth again is equal to 25%. So that means there is a 25% chance that if I flip my coin once and then I spin my spinner once, I'm gonna end up getting a heads when I flip the coin and then either a one or a two from my spinner. Okay, so that's, you know, unlikely, but it's not super small. Um, let, me, let me try to do it. So let me flip my coin first and I got a tails. Okay, so already I know I didn't get the success that I wanted because I got a tails on the first one. That wasn't one of my successes. All right, so that's the last example. Um, now I just want to have you try one. So this is not going to actually change the scenario. I'm going to let you keep the same spam sample space that we already connect created. And all I want you do to do now is instead of finding the probability of flipping a heads and spinning a one or a two, find the probability of flipping a tails and then spinning a number greater than one. So of the numbers one, two, three, and four, which numbers are greater than one? Two, three, and four. So go ahead, use the sample space we created and find this probability of getting a tails and then a number greater than one. If you're not sure how to do this, this is just like the example we just did. So you should go back and watch Look at those notes. I know you can do this if you follow that example. All right, and you should have gotten three eighths or 37.5%. The reasoning for this is there are eight total outcomes, which we already explained. Heads one, heads two, heads three, heads four, tails one, tails two, tails three, tails four. So there's eight total possible outcomes. And then we need to find how many of those are successes or favorable outcomes if our definition of a success or a favorable outcome is a tails, and then we get a number greater than one. Okay, so again, right off the bat, we're gonna get rid of all of our heads options. And then, so tails, and then it needs to be a number greater than one. So that means two, three, and four. One is not greater than one, so that is not an option. So we end up with tails two, tails three, and tails four. Those are our three favorable outcomes. So thus, the probability is 3 eighths, or that's 37.5%. Um, so that's all it is. It's just a little bit harder when we have 
multiple events to put together, but that's why we have the tree diagrams. Good job, everyone.